Hey everyone, welcome back to another developer update for The Soul of Ice 2. The main topic of today is going to be the DLC devices that the player can get their hands on, and I'll talk about those in a minute, but first I want to do a bunch of jump cuts through a bunch of little stuff I've been working on. For starters, you'll notice the heads-up display in the top left. It's a little bit small, right? So I recently implemented a new uh, HUD size option here. So if I hit that large, my icons are now much larger, and this ties in with the, the, the health and the battery don't get any larger, uh, but those weren't really the problem. The problem with these icons, they were kind of hard to see. So now we have the icons that switch in between the devices, uh, the fall meter that tells you if you're going to take fall damage, and the force meter, um, which now reads force and turns red if force mode is on. Speaking of fall damage, the next thing is I have tuned fall damage. So if I go up here and dude, I have taken fall damage. So fall damage has been retuned so that it doesn't deal 250 damage minimum to the player. Um, and will instead deal an apt amount of damage. It's still being retuned a little bit. I believe if the player has full maxed out HP, they uh, can't actually die from fall damage. So, but I'm planning on adding more based on the amount they fall so that they can actually die from it. The next thing I have to show off is player death. I've actually finally implemented death. So if I walk over here and I use this device, unless my HP just goes out and then the player dies. So then if the player dies, there's a bunch of hidden checkpoints that they'll respawn at. Basically any progress the player has made will be rolled back. So if, say, I kill this enemy over here, whoops, just gonna, yeah, and, oh, I died. Gotta watch that HP. So now if I actually watch the HP, I'll die one of these days, I promise. There we go. So he's now dead, but, uh, whoops, I just fell into lava. And the camera shake there, I don't know what happens. I'm looking into it. It's on my short list of things to take care of. But, uh, now if I go over here, you know, the enemy is respawned. That's because I did not touch a checkpoint between the time I killed him and died. So you do want to be very careful not to kill an enemy at the cost of your own life because it won't count. So I've turned off death again for showcase purposes, but the next thing I want to showcase is the height limit. So if I go up here, and I just keep going, and I just keep going, and I just keep going, you'll notice that uh, I have gone really, really far. There is no true height limit anymore. Uh, you'll notice though that my HP has stopped regenerating. So if I glide down slowly, you'll notice it just started again. This is because once you reach a certain height, your HP will stop regenerating. Uh, let me see if I can get to the exact-ish position. Yeah, so it's right about here. So if I do this. Yeah, so it's right about here. So yeah, this point here. Uh, this is about as high as you can go. Um, so for reference, I will now fall down. And um, this is based on the top left corner of the room, not the bottom of the room. So the amount of height you can go is pretty will be pretty consistent between all rooms. Um, but uh, with uh, my unlimited HP here, I can go up basically until the computer has a numerical overflow error. Uh, so yeah, that's fun. And uh, when I fall, I will be taking supreme fall damage unless I deploy the wings. The next thing I want to show is I have refined my laser reflection algorithm. So now lasers will reflect off of things very smoothly. And I've even done it for the shield. So if I pop the shield here, you'll notice the laser now reflects much more evenly based on the angle of the shield. And this puzzle is now much easier to solve because I don't have to place anything. I can just hit that, come in here, flip that switch. Um, but yeah, so if I do this, hit that, hit that, the laser now reflects much more evenly across all surfaces and it's much smoother. And I'll show more on that later. The next thing I want to show is I'm working on seamless room transitions. So if I go down this elevator, this used to lead to the ice uh, testing room and it still does. You'll notice. I'm, I'm in the ice testing room. This is a different room in the game, but there was only a single frame drop uh, in the transition, which you may or may not have seen. Uh, it's much easier to see right now if I use the erasure beam because the erasure beam will blink. Yep, right there. That was the room transition. Uh, so I'm looking into that uh, and trying to make it as seamless as possible, but I'm really liking the way this is going to make this a nice open world that the player can explore around. Um, so that you can have things like this where you just go down and yeah, here, here's you're in the caves below the area above. And the final mini update is I have implemented a new surface of glass. So glass is a returning feature from the original game. In the original game, glass was solid to the player, solid to projectiles, so I can't build through this. 
but it is not solid to lasers, so this laser turret behind it can shoot at me. But with my refined reflection algorithm, let me just uh, do this and uh, kill that turret with its own laser. So getting into the bulk of what I have to talk about today is the DLC weapons. Now, I, I say weapons because I had this idea when I started the game that the player would be facing off against a slew of bosses in the main story that all used devices that had that were parallels of the player's devices. So the soul device that builds, the smelt device that's hot, the ice device that's cold, and the saline device which uses energy and power. So um, I came up with ideas for devices to parallel all these and have the player fight all of them with a different device. Um, so if I talk to this NPC, uh, it will go ahead and unlock the other four devices. There we go, we've unlocked the boss weapons. So I'll go through these in order. Uh, these aren't getting their own unique video individually because each of these kind of builds off of what the other devices do and what they do is pretty straightforward relative to the other devices. So if you haven't seen my updates on the first four devices, you should probably watch those first because a lot of explanation of how things work is going to be found in that. So first of all, we have the torch device. This is the first boss that the player will be facing off against and it uses a torch. So basically the way this device functions is it's a gauntlet that attaches to a torch via a circular connection that allows it to rotate. And I'll get into why that's important in a little bit. But basically this thing, uh, its primary function is just flamethrower. This doesn't have a visual right now and I'll probably be scrapping this function because it is completely overshadowed by its second function, fire wave. So fire wave shoots off fire in a direction and you can probably instantly see how this is already better. It's melting ice everywhere. Uh, this is a crystal right here, which is why it's not melting. Um, but yeah, this just shoots out fire everywhere. And then its third function is firebomb. Um, and so this is affected by force mode. Um, and then its special function is firework, although I'll probably be combining this with firebomb and giving it a new function because uh, I had previously on the ice device made it so that in force mode, you can shoot ice that moves forward and hits stuff but not in force mode, you can arc a projectile that does the same thing. So I'll probably be doing that with this as well, so that firebomb in force mode shoots out in a straight line or to wherever the mouse is, and then fire mode not just does an arcing projectile. So this is nifty and all, but what makes the torch device special? Well, the torch device has the ability to spin, and as a separate entity from the gauntlet, you can detach it. Now what does this do? Well, you can throw it. By right clicking, the torch device will go to where you currently have the mouse and spin in place. Now why is this special? Well first of all, this this is the function that's going to get scrapped. But uh, what about uh, this flamethrower function? Well uh, I uh, feel like filling up the entire screen with fire today so uh, that's what that does. The particle effect will be refined, it will look a little bit nicer in the final version, but yeah basically you can um, set everything on fire with this. So this, th this function's a lot of fun. You can uh, throw fire bombs around basically everywhere using this. It will throw it in the direction it's aiming. Um, and yeah, so this is the torch device. Um, I'm current, I'm thinking about making the special function, make the torch device spin on the player's hand. So if I hold it like right here and do that, so basically it'll do that and it'll spin with the player while they walk around and they can do this as they move. Uh, and then I'm, I'm currently looking at some more designs for it. I kind of want to give each device its unique identity. And this one being pure damage and destruction kind of conflicts with another device that I'm currently working on that I'll get to in a little. So the next device to talk about is the Freeze Ray. So this is the second boss weapon and the second boss the player is going to be facing off against. Now this, this device is primarily an alternate to the Soul device. So what it does is it places platforms just like the Soul device does, except these platforms are made out of ice. So if I build here, and then I ice this up here, boom, there we go. We have a laser that bounces off of this platform. Now, the other thing of note of this is if I ice a surface and then I try soul building off of it, it will reflect. But if I ice build off of it, it won't. So the freeze ray is the soul device, but it's automatically reflective and you can build off of ice with it. Now, the question is, why would you ever use the soul device again? Well, the soul device is half the cost. You'll notice if I use this, my HP drains extremely rapidly. But if I use the soul device, my HP drains extremely slowly. That doesn't look like half the cost. Yeah, it's it's a lot more expensive to use the freeze ray than to use the soul device uh, for its build. So its right click is, of course, freeze erasure. 
uh, which parallels the soul device. So you can erase what you build. All right, so I've reset the room and my ice is back and that's important because I want this to be as closed of a room as possible to show off the next function. This, so I guess I'll show you the upgrade menus for these. The flamethrower one looks like this. You've got the flamethrower, the fire wave, the fire bomb, and the firework, and then you can spin it. Uh, for the freeze ray, the next thing I want to show off is the frost laser. So what this does, uh, this shoots out a laser. It's not a true laser in the sense that it can't activate laser receivers, and there's a specific reason for that. In order to activate a laser receiver, the laser receiver needs to be not reflective. It needs to receive the laser as opposed to the laser bouncing off of it. The reason this doesn't do that is because what this does is it ices any surface it hits. So any surface it hits, it will automatically ice, and it will automatically cut cover in an ice the same way the ice device does. Now, I'll probably nerf this a little bit so it doesn't spread out quite as much as the ice device. Or maybe not, because it's just fun. Because what I can do is I can do this, and in a second, cover this entire area in ice. And that's just kind of fun. Um, this also allows you to ice surfaces on the other side of glass, because as a laser, it moves through glass, and it hits a surface and will ice it. So that's where the puzzle solving for this comes in. Next up is freeze barrier. So freeze barrier is pretty simple. Uh, if you use it on anything that isn't a barrier, it'll just function like the, the ice device's uh, main shot. So what you can do is with the sailing device, it has a power barrier, which allows you to turn a barrier into a solid platform that you can then build off of. Whereas before, you can't, it just goes through it. So what freeze barrier does is essentially the same thing, except with ice. So this is now a reflective surface. And then I might make it so that IZ Razor Beam gets rid of that the same way you can get rid of uh, and power barrier with uh, the power sap. So then just the same as the soul device, the freeze rays special function is quick build. So this basically allows you to quick build icy surfaces at any angle. Uh, so this is really useful if you just want like a really small thing for reflecting a laser. It's probably going to be cheaper overall than using the soul device and the ice device to make an angled platform. Uh, but if it's something that's really long, maybe you want to use the soul device to get out to it. And then you want to use the freeze ray to just create a little platform that angles properly. Um, and one thing of note is that the solar razor and freeze razor have no overlap. So um, the solar razor beam can't erase freeze nodes and the freeze razor beam can't erase soul nodes. <clears throat> so the next device to talk about is the iris device. This is the third, <laughs> you'll notice the block of text at the bottom. This is the third boss fight the player has to go through. And I'm really excited about this one because it's got a lot of mechanics that work together. Uh, so I'll be programming that. Uh, it's on my short list to design that boss fight. Uh, and actually implement it. So basically, uh, this in its most simplest form is a uh, it's, it's a laser device. It shoots lasers. So the important thing to note is this will actually produce a different beam whether you're in force mode or not. So when you're not in force mode, it creates a targeting laser. You'll notice this drains my HP very, very slowly. So when it is in force mode though, it creates a deadly laser. Now this is one of the few lasers in the game that doesn't have a charge up time. So if I go visit uh, our friend the laser turret up above, if he's revived, and he is. So you'll notice this laser starts out as a targeting laser and then slowly heats up and now I'm taking lots of damage into a deadly laser. So the difference with the player is I can do a targeting laser or I can do a deadly laser. And the deadly laser is of course deadly. Uh, it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage right now and the reason behind that is that this laser pierces enemies. So if you have an entire group of enemies, this will pierce all of them and deal damage to all of them at once. So I'm working on balance on that. It's gonna take some game design and some testing first, but this is what the device does. So beyond that, this device has some rather special functions in the form of nodes. So power node is actually the first thing I implemented for this and laser node was an idea that came later, but laser node is more in line with the device does. So basically, this will create laser nodes um, fired off in a direction. These, these are not affected by gravity. Uh, and then if you fire them off and you right click, they shoot lasers from wherever they land. So this is useful and that say there's that there and I want to activate that. Well, now I can activate that without anything else. This allows me to activate receivers that I can't reach normally, receivers that are on the other side of barriers, receivers. I can design a lot of puzzles around this. Um, and all types of nodes are destroyed by the player's laser. So I can eradicate those. The other thing 
uh, right now as I have, I can right click them to delete them, but I'll probably get rid of that because these are also deleted by the player's reset key, which is uh, set to R. I'm not sure if I've spoken about that in previous videos because I added that. Uh, there's now a reset key in the key bindings uh, that will break any player builds that the player makes. Um, yeah, so that is laser node. So laser node, uh, the other thing about it is it will shoot a regular laser or a deadly laser depending on whether you're in force mode and you can tell which type it is by the color of its node. And the deadly one of course has a charge up time because it is not the player's main laser. Um, and yeah, so that's that. So the other, the next type of node is power node. So what this does is this node creates an energy field wherever it lands. And you'll notice the lines connecting between these nodes. I'll talk about that in just a moment. So basically these create energy fields and these are useful because they function just the same as the saline energy field. Uh, it creates an energy of power that powers things. Anything in the area will become powered. So you can attach these to hatches and open those up and close them whenever you want. And uh, the right click function of the iris device is power on. Now this doesn't do anything with the regular laser, but it does everything with all of the nodes it uses. So you notice with each and every node I place, it's draining more and more HP for these nodes. Now that sucks. So what can I do about that? Well, if I fire one into this door here that's connected to the power grid, you'll notice turning this on is still, well, it's still taking a little bit of HP. That's because some of these nodes are perhaps outside. All right, so yeah, there we go. So by firing one into the door, you'll notice it's no longer draining my HP to turn these on. And I'm curious if, yeah, so there we go. You'll notice that all of my nodes are no longer draining HP and they are networking with one another. Basically, it's draining HP out of this door here into this system and these nodes are sharing power along their system. There is a range limit to this. So if I delete this node in the middle, it's draining my HP again for these two nodes over here. But if I put a node back in the middle, there we go, it's connected again. And any type of node can network like this, including the special function node, which is bridge node. Now a bridge node does is it's the, the quick build type function. So with this, if I place two nodes and right click, they will connect a bridge. And what this is, is it's solid. They're actually creating a solid barrier between them that I can walk on. Now, if I uh, get caught in this, it will kill me very quickly, like a very powerful laser. Um, but with these, you can connect basically a whole bunch of these and they'll just network together. Um, they do network with other types of nodes. Um, and if you turn quick build off and on again, then it will start a new bridge system. So that's how you can create two different bridge systems. It's like that. Uh, whereas if I just did all four nodes without resetting it, they all connect. And if you break a node um, in the middle, then they don't connect anymore. So both nodes, it doesn't reset the system. Each node will only ever connect to one other node um, and it will not change what node it connects to after it's been created. So that is the iris device. So it's got this block of text down here. Basically the, the right click toggles power to everything and the potency of different functions like the lasers is affected by force mode. Um, and uh, you can destroy your nodes with lasers uh, as well as the system can drain power from the power grid. There's one more device to talk about and that is the sword device. So the sword device is basically a lightsaber but it has a physical blade instead. The science behind this is that the soul converter produces a physical blade like the soul device produces matter and creates a blade out of the soul converter. So basically I now have this sword. So the main function that comes with the sword device is called Grand Melee. This allows you to swing the sword. It's currently, oh, and the blade is decayed. So you'll notice that the blade decays not entirely, but little by little. The blade has 15, let's call them notches in it, of basically timers that determine when it's gonna decay. I won't get into the specifics of how it happens, but basically uh, the blade keeps track of when which piece of it was created. And the blade lasts about 10 seconds by default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna upgrade the durable soul up to level five. So that will now make the blade last for 15 seconds. And so I can swing the blade. It swings about once a second. Uh, you can swing it slower than that and just always do down swipes. And you can also hold right click and you'll notice my HP will drain shortly and it will regenerate the blade. There it goes. And the blade has been regenerated without losing the blade because I was holding down right click. 
So the other thing that Grand Melee can do is if you hold down, your player will raise the sword and they will dash. And you'll notice my charge bar was filling up when I did that. So this is the dash attack. This uh, is pretty wonky in how it works. I'm still working on the engine. So you can only perform this if you have a blade active. Uh, I hit R there to reset and I don't have the blade. So if I charge up, I can't do anything because I don't have an active blade. But if I create a blade, charge up, do that. There we go. And then in force mode, it will always um, go the maximum distance. Whereas if I just do this, oh, that went far because it's a little bit glitched. I'm currently working on the horizontal movement of it. Sometimes it will throw the player until they hit a wall. So yeah, basically you charge it up and you can do a dash attack. And this will damage any enemies you collide with uh, in the way. So speaking of enemies, let's go visit one. So the, the blade can block bullets, and you'll notice as it does so, it shrinks. Uh, a bullet will damage the blade. So I just killed that enemy by swinging at them. And then the dash attack would have also worked just fine for killing them. So this is the sword's main thing, Grand Melee. Um, and then the sword device's hilts can produce blades, but they decay just like all other shoal matter. So its second function is Launch Blade. So this one is a lot of fun. So one of the things I wanted to focus on when designing the sword device was making it a weapon of mobility. So basically this device would allow the player to be more mobile, which is why I added the dash attack. Hey, yeah. This allows the player to move using the sword device, but also I now have throw blade. So this is kind of like a lightsaber throw from Star Wars, except you're throwing the blade and it's not coming back and you can make another one. So one of the unique things about the sword device is that all of its primary functions don't drain from the player, um, at least currently. Uh, the only thing that drains the player, there's only two things that drain the player's HP right now, which is creating a blade and something I'll talk about in a moment. So I just create the blade and throw the blade. And you notice the player uh, raises up the sword device a little bit. So if I go between uh, functions, he'll change, um, he'll change the stance. Let's go in this one, he's getting ready to throw it. So he holds it up a little bit higher. Now this can, um, you have to keep pay attention to this one blocking bullets and stuff, but this is definitely not an optimized weapon for blocking bullets. Um, but yeah, the other thing is if you're in force mode, when you do this, the player will receive knockback uh, when they throw their blade. So this is really useful because if you're airborne and you throw it down, you can perform a double jump. And you can uh, continue this as long as you have power or HP. So you can do this right before you hit the ground to negate fall damage. Uh, you can you can do this uh, while jumping to uh, try and reach new areas. I have just fallen into the lava and taken fall damage, but whatever. Um, so yeah. The other thing uh, that you might have caught a glimpse of earlier is if I create a blade and then swap devices, the blade will remain at the player's hip uh, as they sheathe it. And then if they swap back to the sword device, they can resume it. Now the blade will continue to decay at its normal rate. So if I just leave this here and use another device all willy nilly, it will eventually just decay like that. And then I'll have to generate a new blade. Now the third thing here is blade eruption. Now this isn't implemented and I'm also planning on changing this uh, because with this, uh, basically I had an idea of the player shoots out kind of like icicle spike on the ice device where the player shoots out a small projectile that arcs and where it lands, it creates a blade out of the ground that creates a trap for enemies. But I'm planning on just including that in launch blade where the player throws their blade and it impales into a wall. And then if any enemies touch it, they'll take damage. So I'm currently ideating for the third function, but the fourth mode is implemented and that is dark saber mode. And the description for that is wrong. <laughs> I'll update that later. So what dark saber mode does is this, the special function, the middle click. When activated, the blade goes dark and cackles with energy. Now what this does is the blade will decay twice as fast um, and it will constantly drain the player's HP. But the other thing is the player can generate blades twice as fast and uh, the player's stats are entirely upgraded. So basically you'll notice I can swing the blade much faster. I deal basically twice as much damage um, my blade just decayed. Uh, the dash uh, has a much smaller cooldown on it, so I can dash much sooner. And it also, of course, deals more damage. And then throw blade throws the player much harder. 
So basically if I want to, I can generate a blade jump, dark saber, in and out of dark saber mode real quick. And get a lot of height out of it. Oh, but I'm still in dark saber mode. But yeah, that drains HP really quickly. Uh, just to show you how um, costly this is, I'm going to upgrade the player all the way. So we're talking like full battery, full health. And uh, turn on dark saber mode, and you'll notice it's draining my battery pretty quickly. So, uh, what I can do is I can still get out a lot of damage with this, but you'll notice like as soon as that happens, it's just gone. Uh, but what I can do is I can buy the lifeguard, and so the lifeguard will make it so the dark saber mode can't kill me. Uh, if I'm about to die via loss of HP, dark saber mode will end, and uh, my HP will start regenerating again. But yeah, this is the sword device and how it works. I'm uh, excited to see where this goes. It's really fun um, throwing yourself around with the blades and jumping around and stuff. Um, and it doesn't completely trivialize the old things because even though it's a good mobility function, um, it's a lot of HP for a single mo movement. Um, and if you're moving around spots that don't require you to move around a whole bunch, that's fine. Uh, but the soul device is still going to be cheaper overall. Uh, and also more lasting, so if you need to move around. And also, this whole device is good for puzzle solving, so there's still that. But that covers about everything I have to show today. So thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're looking forward to this. And I would appreciate any and all feedback you have. I'm basically just looking to make this as fun of a game as possible. Uh, if you have any ideas, anything you think looks not fun, and I think you, anything you think looks very fun, uh, please let me know, and I'll be happy to listen to feedback. So I'll see you guys next time.